tonight is the first of two nights of our monster truck racing here at Yakima Speedway tomorrow night once again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment y'all been waiting for. The one, the only, Bobby Lee Neville and his super monster truck, Grandma's Satanic Weed Whacker! Performing for the first time ever, the death defying, hog tying, change my jockeys because I can't believe my eyes, J.C. Nichols Fountain Jump! Oh man, come on now. Come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on! Dang it, where's a good mechanic when you need one? Oh yeah, they're all dead. News Radio 980 KMBZ and Intercom Kansas City proudly present Night of the Literary Dead. <laughs> Tonight, Richard Matheson meets Dale Earnhardt Jr. by way of Charlton Heston and Tallboy Beers when the last man on Earth and the Omega Man find themselves rewritten onto the blue collar of Middle America in this special Halloween adaptation entitled The Last Dude on Earth. Now, adjust your ball cap, pop the top on your beer, and kick back as we get her done or get her dead with The Last Dude on Earth. Should have known that truck wasn't up for it. Now to get a ride home. Might try a Lexus. Maybe a Beamer. How about... Oh, man, is this a smart car? Hmm, I always wondered. <laughs> Cow tipping and smart car tipping. Two peas in a pod. <sighs> Not a cop in sight. A few years ago, I'd have been cuffed and stuffed in a heartbeat. Not now. See... I'm Bobby Lee Neville. And I'm the last dude on Earth! Last human one, anyways. Jeez, how long has it been since the sickness took them all? Uh, die, human! Oh. You first, pardon! Oh, we'll get you! Not today! Yeah, brain suckers. Parasite. Wasn't always like this. I remember when I had a job. A life! Then my brother, Mr. Highfalutin College graduate, hoity-toity boy, come for a visit. I can see it like it was yesterday. Are you ready to Christmas, hold your horses. I'm coming, don't get your panties in a wad. Ha, huh, look what the cat drugged in and puked on the carpet. Good to see you too, Bobby. What can I do for you, Lenny? Well, for, for starters, you could let your brother in. Not really interested in a visit that'll take that long, see... I'm just a stupid redneck jack. Just let me in. This is important. And you insulting me wasn't. That was five years ago. Let it go. Huh? Nope, no way. You need to tell me three little words. I love you? No, stupid. I'm sorry, Bobby. Then there's another 30 or 40 other words that include things like I and was and wrong. But those three start the rest of everything. Now get out. We need to talk. Inside. Get out of my home. Ain't a double wide in the world big enough for the both of us. There's going to be plenty of room soon enough. <laughs> All the room in the world. You been drinking? Drinking, thinking, stinking. You want some? Whoa, talk about bottom shelf. At least you were kind enough not to leave much for me. Whoops, there's more in the car. No, no car for you. Give me the keys. I'm fine. No, I'm not. But I am. Is your nose bleeding? Uh... No. Nope. It will be if you don't give me your keys right now. Bully. Sit down. Take the Barker Lounge, your best seat in the house. Is that wrestling on the TV? Yep, I got me a DVD set. 39 discs, best of 2008, plus a bonus disc of bloopers. Oh, my God. That's what I said when I found them on eBay. Score! No, I mean, never mind. Look, Bobby, I came here for a reason. Yeah, to talk to me about how great you are. Bobby. And how smart you got working at them college labs and stuff. You gotta listen. Don't get me started on you making fun of NASCAR. It's a science, too, you know. A fast science that's loud with hot chicks. Bobby, we're going to die. Been talking to Grandpa, ain't you? More than five minutes with him yapping about his lumbago and the nurses stealing his moon pies and who just died down the hall. Yeah, I get depressed too. Not Grandpa. An accident at the lab. No, that's a lie. None of it was an accident. It's just, we didn't know. We were trying to do good for the world, I swear. You make less sense than an auctioneer with a lisp. The lab I work at, worked at. 
the Institute of Macrobiological Genetics Engineering. We are making incredible advances reorganizing viral genome structures. All I heard was blah, 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 I'm so smart, blah, blah. We monkeyed with flu bugs. Now I'm picking up your channel. The government gave us unlimited grant money to work on a special project, one that would make the world a better place. The centerfold without a crease would make the world a better place. You're an idiot. Sixty grand on your education, and I can't get a Miss July without one big old wrinkle right through her belly button. That's a crime. We created a virus that inserted a genome into the human brain cell. That genome grafted itself onto our DNA, created a whole new breed of people with an instinctual need for community interaction and compliance. It strengthened both. It made the community better. <laughs> What's so funny? That Chambers, look at him go. He's pumped up like a bull moose who swallowed an air compressor. Whoa, windmill! You threw your bottle into my TV. You're going to pay for what you done. We all are. I was telling you, we made a bug. We infected some people with it. It made them care about everyone else. I've heard of worse things. They all wanted to be part of the group, part of the collective. We discovered a way to make the world better. Better than what? Honestly? better than you. Same old Lenny, looking down on everybody who ain't him. Now get out! We screwed up. The virus worked too well. Subjects wanted to help everyone and couldn't help themselves. They became starving, wild animals. They clawed at the walls, at the windows. They screamed that if we didn't join them, we were evil. They they fed off each other. It was never enough. They, they couldn't keep their group alive without feeding off people who weren't a part of the collective, the group. I hope that's the booze talking. You're creeping me out like there's no tomorrow. They shun the light, preferring to huddle in the dark, clinging to each other, becoming a mass instead of being singled out as individuals. Worst part was the fangs. Say what? One of our grad students went in to get tests on Subject 36. It was dark in the room because she wouldn't stop screaming in the light. Stephen must not have noticed she'd slipped her hands out of her straps. He turned his back to make notes, and she jumped on him. She bit him on the back of the neck and sucked. It took five of us to get her off of him. She bit him. Sank fangs into the back spinal cortex. Seemed to suck out, well, his willpower, his life force. We talking like a vampire or something? Sort of. A vampire who drinks your soul. Dude, that's the grossest thing I ever heard of. Except for a video I saw on YouTube once where this worm was in a dude. She infected him. Steven got sick. He became one of them. You gave him the antidote, right? Lanny? Oh, craptastic. There ain't no antidote. We decided to destroy the subjects. Subjects? They were people. They were a threat. No, you and your idiots are a threat. How dare you try to force folks into being what you think is better people? We were trying to do good. Yeah, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, dumbhead. So they're stuck in your lab? Not really. That's why I'm here instead of there. They got out? Big time. Call the government. Get the troops in. I tried. They deny any knowledge. Uh, Don't kid yourself. They know what's happening. They just don't care because it meets their goals. To make people sick? To infect them with a sickness that rots their soul, makes them huddle in the dark, makes them eat the living. Oh, man, the pain. You hurt? Take a look at the back of my neck. Whoa, that's nasty. Ever think of a Band-Aid genius? Won't work on this. Couple of infected spider bites? Try fang punctures. Oh, crap. (coughs) Not much time left. I can feel the sickness, the urge to find the dark, to commune with the parasites. That's why I packed my trunk with all of my, my research, lab results, tools. To keep working? To give to you. What for? I'm a shop mechanic at Freddy's House of Lube. You're my brother. There's ever been a person who's been himself no matter where, no matter when. Like the time I brought home my first girlfriend and you thought the perfect opportunity to show her how you could fart the alphabet? Yeah, that was pretty good. I got all the way to Q and then I pushed a little too hard. Uh, See, you are just you, no matter how inappropriate. Maybe you can stay you long enough to find the key that I missed. But I got no degrees, no college learning. I do, and look at the mess I made. Listen, Bobby, I did come up with an antidote. Maybe. It's experimental. No time to test it before they broke out, before madness took over. That's in the trunk, too. Lord, why don't you take it? I don't deserve to live. Look, you stay here. Let me go to the bathroom, get some hydrogen peroxide and some bactine, and then we'll figure it all out, okay? Okay, Bobby. I'm on it. Idiot. Know he'd do something stupid sooner or later. Making the world better. Should have started with himself first. Here you go, bro. Bro? Lenny? Oh, crap. Check his pulse? Nothing. Oh, geez. 
Look, bro, I, I can't do this alone. Beer butt chicken, I got it. DNA, genome, aloma, ding dong. That's all you. What am I going to do? Bobby. Hey, you ain't cacked. You're okay. I feel changed. Yeah, bad whiskey does that. No, good change. Like I'm part of something bigger than myself. <laughs> Okie dokie. Your eyes are kind of creepy now. Let me be perfectly clear. I belong to the collective. Whoa, you're turning green. Green is good. Belonging is good. And look what I get for joining. Nope, all done. I quit where the fangs start. Turn around. How about you sit back down, and I back up over here to my gun rack. Don't make me use Grandpa's Belgium Browning 16 gauge on you, hoss. I'll make a hole where there used to be a you. You won't shoot me. I'm your brother. You got fangs and freaky eyes, and you're green, and you ain't my brother no more. Join us or die. Which is it? If you're the group, I'll just stay me. Wrong answer. Ah! I'm sorry, bro. That's what happens when you join. And he said, more parasites coming. I should get going. All right, I'll just... Join us. Ah, you bit my foot! Need some uh, rubbing alcohol, Tylenol, x lags Wait, he said antidote. Um, trunk! That's a lot of books and boxes that ain't labeled. Dude, I don't know what an antidote looks like. Hang on, what's that? A metal briefcase. Ain't that hoity-toity. Huh, nothing in here but a syringe full of yellow stuff. Is this it? There's only one. I guess I got it. What if it doesn't work? What if I become one of them? No choice, gotta do what I gotta do. Hate needles. Here goes. Ah, God! Ah! Well, I guess it worked, because... Here I am. I read his notes, went to the KU Med Center, and took equipment since nobody else was using it by that time. I researched genetics and medical stuff and lab stuff. Yeah, me. No cable TV equals lots of time for reading. I could fire up a Jenny and watch my DVDs, but to be honest, nowadays, wrestling just reminds me of... Anyway, I started making batches of possible antidote. I caught parasites. I injected them. They died. Don't know about an antidote, but I was making one heck of a parasite pesticide. That was in the first two years after the world went crazy. Now I just hunt them down. Speaking of, it's getting dark and they'll be out soon. In daylight, it's my world. In the dark, it's theirs. Time to go. Now. You're listening to The Last Dude on Earth, an original radio theater adaptation written from Intercom Kansas City. Please relax, get another piece of candy, and prepare for more spookiness when we return. <laughs> we now return to the last dude on earth on News Radio 980 KMBC. Never thought I'd have me an address in the OP, but dude, you want a fortress for a house? This is the place. Bars already on the windows. Front door made of three inch thick oak. A second store with them porches off the rooms like highfalutin deer stands. Most evenings, I sit up there with a jar of whiskey, night vision goggles, and a 30 out 6 Gotta pick off the parasites that get past the front gate. Roland Burgerstein, whoever you are, were. Thanks, dude. Stocked up your casa with everything, including including a wet bar that makes Hugh Hefner drop a blonde in surprise. <laughs> Inheriting the world can have its benefits. And it's sucky parts. Rock's hitting the house right on schedule. Join us. Have hope. Oh, I hope, all right, that you die. Don't be a That's parasites, all right. Join them or get killed by them. It's just true democracy, redneck. There's more of us than you. All right, whoever votes the redneck has to join us. Bro. <laughs> That's Barry, their leader. He's been trying to find a way to get me for over two years now. Ever since I stayed out too late one night in the Sprint Center, fired up a bunch of generators, got a guitar, and sang God Bless the USA! Who knew Parasites hated it so much? It was such a pretty house for just one person. 
You don't deserve it. We'll take it from you. That's his play toy, and she's getting too close for comfort, so I'll get a little dinner courtesy of Chef Jim Beam. <sighs> Load up a few of my little friends and head on up to challenge their voting habits. Hey, you brain-sucking numb nuts! it's your birthday, and I'm about to give you some presents. Gift wrapped in lead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you, redneck. Now when well, I'm breathing, buddy. The weeks pass and I barely notice. All I do is scrounge for fuel and food and liquor. Not always in that order. For fun, I look for monster trucks and garages and barns and such. See, I still got the dream. You need something of your own to live for. Otherwise, why live at all? Anywho, today I need some winter clothes, so that's why I'm going to Burlington Coat Factory, since there ain't no parkas or us around Kansas City. Grass growing up in the cracks in the parking lot. Paper blown up against the poles, windows broken. Ain't no more special sales nowhere now. Ah! Dang it! Never can get used to them store dummies with their staring eyes. Better check the toilet paper aisle first, because that just about scared the sh**. Who's there? Hey, you! Stop or I'll shoot! Ow! Don't move, parasite. Don't shoot, moron. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm the guy with oh, the... Oh, no, you didn't. You did not. Just say, I'm the guy. I did, but you interrupted the rest. That's it. My mama didn't raise me to let no man shoot me in a Burlington coat factory and raise his voice to me and just walk away without something getting busted up on him. Hey, darling, I'm the one with a gun. Yeah, well, I got, I got this. A nose hair trimmer? I'm willing to use it, mister. Step over into this here sunlight. Why? So you can see me better to shoot me? You're half right. And if I don't? I'll make the other half right. Okay. Okay. There. Huh. What? You're pretty. Uh-huh. And you're the wrong color. What? My mama didn't raise me to let no man say my color ain't right. Whoa, I'm just saying you ain't green. Prejudice against green people, are you? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, me too. I hate them. Then we got something in common. So, you ain't out to kill me or suck my brain or make me your Thunderdome sex slave? What? I'm thinking it over. I'll trim you down to the bone, boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I came here for a good winter coat, maybe some long johns or something. Yeah, me too. For the coat. I see you got a pile. Problem is, them ain't your size. Well, uh, I'm trying to lose weight. Why? Hmm. You talk stupid, but your words make smart. Not getting you. Not yet, you ain't. Hang on. Them ain't for you. There's more people? Yep. One is sick. Got bit by you know what. I got the cure. I'll kill you first, redneck. He's just a boy. I guess I could take a look at him. What? You're a doctor? Nah, a microbiological genetics engineer in training. Say what? I'll give you a ride. Tell you about my brother. Come on, get your coats. Hold on. I don't even know your name. Bobby Lee Neville. Bobby Lee? Like Robert Lee? Like Robert E. Lee? No, like Bobby Lee. I'm just me. What's your name? Lakeisha Johnson. Good to meet you, Lakeisha. Same to you, Bobby. Grab some coats, would you? We left that dead outlet mall, drove across a dead city, and found ourselves cruising the trash littered streets of the 18th and Vine District. Turn here! What? Turn here at this church! What? Turn off the music! Turn right here! Turn now! Turn! Why didn't you just say so? Sheesh. What was that on the radio? My cassette of Molly Hatchet. Did we have to jump the pavilion behind the Negro Leagues Museum? That's my way of giving a shout out to Buck O'Neill. He's one of my heroes. I thought you'd like that. The shout out? Sure. Going 25 feet in the air while you scream, yee Not so much. I'm getting out of this stupid redneck mobile right now. You might want to watch that. <laughs> First step. I hate this truck. I hate your music. Just so you know. Got it. Who goes there? Get back, Lakeisha. 
drop it or I'll drop you. Your rifle versus my scatter gun. We'll see who drops first. Hey, John and Jane Wayne, we're on the same side here. We are. Duh. But when I saw him shove you out of the macho mobile... Well, I found out his stupid truck on my own, Sam. He's done nothing but help bring us some coats. He might be able to help Rambo. This idiot? He's the poster child for beer pong. He should have his belly painted red in the stands at the K. You saw that game. Dude, was I ever liquored up. Oh, Lord. Y'all think we can go inside today, hmm? Well, if you're on the team, put her there, Bubba. Wow, quite a handshake for a girl. What's he mean by that? Nice hair. My daddy used to have a crew cut, too, except his wasn't so short. You misogynist. Baptist, actually. Lakeisha! He grows on you. Like mold. Let's get a move on. So you guys hold up in a church. That's kind of, I don't know, dangerous, ain't it? I mean, look at them stained glass windows. A person could just barge right in. Nah, greenies don't like churches. They're afraid it'll make them look bad. And that's against their religion of non-religiousness, Bubba. The name's Bobby. The meaning's the same. What's your beef with me? You're breathing. Sam's not fond of anyone with a Y chromosome. Bunch of fascist sexist pigs. Oh, you're one of them thespians. Please let me shoot him. No, we need him. We, wait, you two are, uh... You know, a couple type thing. What? Sam and I? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh Uh-uh. No way. That's too funny. Sam and I? A couple? (laughs) Ha-ha. What a joke, ain't it, Sam? 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 Rambo's behind the curtain. Awkward. He don't look good. We think he's infected. For sure. Them bulging eyes, monobrow, jug ears. Hey, Bubba. Bad teeth, goofy lips, dumb expression. Bobby. Don't get me started on how wimpy he is. It's the muscle atrophy from the parasite disease that makes him look like he ain't done a decent day's work in his whole daggone life. Like he sat in front of a computer blogging all day about things he ain't never done. A weak-kneed, slack-jawed, goofy-faced whiner. That's how he looked before he got bit this morning. So he's just an ugly kid. Hello, laying here. Sorry, kid. No offense. None taken. Redneck jerk. Lakeisha, I hope you know what you're doing with this hick from the sticks. Here, look at these two holes on the back of his neck. Uh, Them there is a fine pair of lacerated wounds showing subcutaneous extravasation. Superation ain't happening yet, but... You can sure see some septic inflammation and and look at them radiating lines of septicemia. That's bad juju all around. Did his mouth say all those words? You don't dress like you think that smart. Honey, clothes don't make a man. They just make him less naked. Instead of being so busy judging me by my looks, why don't you talk to me like I'm a human and judge me for that? First time that's been said to me instead of the other way around. How'd a redneck like you get so smart? His brother was a genetic engineer. He helped make the plague. Thanks for sharing that little bit of instant popularity. I'm just saying. Well, it was the uneducated who made this mess, not the brilliant. Who are you kidding? My brother and his cronies all had BSs and MSs and PhDs and... SOLs and ASAPs. When these geniuses passed gas, it got added to the periodic table as pull my finger on him. But education is a tool, not an end. They used it to start a disease that makes other folks live off in other people, like big green parasites. It's not like dumb people helped. Nope, they were too busy trying to live their lives. And look what them super smarties did. Don't seem so bright now, do they? Can I tell you how much I hate the fact that I agree with you? Do you hate it enough to make me your slave? No. Then it might just be that we really are on the same side. Could you guys shut up? I was dreaming about Carmen Electra. Who ain't, Junior? No kidding there. What? So, what do we do for Rambo? Well, he's got a parasite wound. Plus, he's pretty beat up. Yeah, he fought off a small band of greenies. He shot most, but ran out of ammo, so he used a buck knife on the last. This little guy's a fighter, but he lost a lot of blood doing it. That's it. We'll start with a transfusion. I mean, seriously. This little scrapper's gonna need some new hydraulic fluid if he's gonna survive and go on dreaming about Carmen Electra. Ugh, TMI. I need the med kit in the truck. I'll get it. Where is it at? Driver's side, behind the seat, under the gun rack, right next to the 12-pack of Schlitz. Probably on top of my TNA magazine collection. Ew! Trucks and Antlers? I love that magazine. Oh, it, I, never mind. What about me, Bubba? First, use my real name or I'll show you my birthmark that looks like G. Gordon Liddy. Bobby, got it. Second, find me some clean towels and some kind of alcohol. Will Jen do? Martini girl, are you? All the way down to my still-toed boots. Bring it. Then we'll transfuse my blood into him. Why you? Check out my foot. 
Are those... Yep, two bite hole scars. I done survived a parasite. They bite your neck, not your foot. Not when you shot them, but they ain't quite dead. If at first you don't succeed, fire, fire again. Why'd you stick around after the first shot? My brother deserved at least that. Oh, I'll get what you need, Bobby. Thanks, Sam. This is an original radio theater adaptation of The Last Dude on Earth, written from Intercom, Kansas City. Enjoy this short break, then prepare for the conclusion, if you dare. We now return to The Last Dude on Earth on News Radio 980 KMBC. Well, I give him about all I can. So let's stop the blood transfusion. I'll take the needle out of my arm. Ouch! Hand me the mycetricin salve. Here. Thanks. Now that piece of cloth. Okay. And that duct tape. There. Good as new. Compliments of Dr. Goodwrench. All right, nurse smarty pants. You fix up the boy. Okay. By the way, he's looking better. Yeah, getting some color back. And it ain't green, so that's good. Well, I guess I'll go get the rest of my stuff from my house if I'm going to help around here. Hey, Redneck! Yeah? Thanks. Sure. Bobby Lee, what you did in there was a good thing. Well, heck, he's just a kid, and he fought hard. Least I could do. The least I could do is give you a personal... Thank you. Now, I got one from Sam. Sorta. Dipped in a little acid, but I figure that's just the way she is. It's all good. Why are you looking at me like that? You don't take a hint, do you? Hint for what? Hey, that was nice. You're a good man down under all that flannel, Bobby Lee. I like a good man. I got more thank you saved up. But you gotta come back and get them. Don't you desert us, cowboy. Heck no, ma'am. Just need to get the rest of my lab gear, my cigars, and a few bottles of wild turkey, and my wrestling DVDs, and we'll get this thing figured out together. Well, hurry up then. I don't like to wait when I got business to get to. <clears throat> no, ma'am. The name is Lakeisha. Learn to use it. I, uh, I got a... No! I meant to do that. To trip over your own feet. It's a judo move. Messes with the parasites. I gotta go. <laughs> I got to my place, packed up the lab stuff, the notes, a bunch of them little rubber hoses and bottles and stuff, and that spinny thing with the test tubes. Oh, and my mini fridge that runs off of propane. That son of a gun was a lifesaver for blood samples and blood light. Also got all my guns and ammo. That took a while. By the time I got going, it was dark. Dang it. I gotta get to the church. Well, I did get back in time. It was exactly too late o'clock. Why is the door open? Lakeisha? Sam? Rambo? Anybody? <laughs> is that you, darling? It's me, darling. Whoa, hey, ever thought of a coat, a jacket maybe, or any clothes at all? This is what I wear in the collective. Ain't there a pair of socks amongst y'all? I see you desire me. <laughs> Captain Kirk might, but green ain't my thing. Kill me and you'll never find your African queen, or the girl with the bad hair and great shoes, or the boy who's one of us. Not yet he ain't. Well, he will be. Bugs you, don't it? He's still himself. He ain't just a carbon copy like you. Shut up! <sighs> he will join, son loner. Son was her? You who walk in the light, you who stand alone, the cursed son loners. See for yourself how foolish you are. We've gathered, thousands of us, tens of thousands of us, inside the Sprint Center. We're organized. We're ready. Be there in one hour, <laughs> or your friends die. Sure, I'll come to your rally in one hour. But if they're hurt, you die first. Oh, it's a date, big boy. <laughs> See you later. One hour to the showdown. Well, I guess this is it. I can't kill thousands of them, even with Granddad's shotgun. However, from what she said, 
I got an idea. Yes, my brothers and sisters, together we create a new age, a new time. We reject the status quo of the selfish, of the beings who only live for their singular desires. Status quo. Instead, they live for us. They will feed us. They will do as we say for the collective. Here upon this stage, tied to posts for all to see, are two of the Sun Loners. Shut up, you green googly freaks! She says to shut up, but we will not be silenced! And on my left, this boy fights us, but we are in his blood. Soon, he will be one of us! City. Are you ready to rock? Look who's arrived, the prodigal moron. Hey, I've heard that voice before. Outside my window where you couldn't get in. Run, Bobby Lee is a trap! He controls it! Oh, I, I don't control the collective. I'm just the voice of the people. The people! Time you join the winners, redneck. How about we live and let live and let our lives be the proof of our choices? Because that's not fair. See all these people? They aren't you. They didn't make your choices. So they got cheated out of a life like yours. What we want is an equal outcome. That way, choices, effort, fate, none of it matters. All you have to do is give away the rights to your own soul. And then you get everybody else's belongings. Finally, justice for the masses. masses. Let my friends go. And I'll do it. Bobby, no! You won't give up your soul for all of us, but you will for these two? My life, my choice. You might want to take me up on this deal, because it's the only way you're going to get me without a bunch of your green freaks dying. You did notice the guns, right? <laughs> Somebody's overcompensating. You're just a typical, hateful, gun-toting average redneck. Always keeping the green man down. Oh, no, you did not just say what I heard you say. The green man? It's a new world order, sweetheart. Mean, lean, and oh so green. Green power! Hey, Mr. Yakety Yak, my trigger finger's getting itchy. Fine. Let them go! Oh, but I'm hungry. Soon enough, Sister Lisa. And by the way, nice shoes. Are they new? Yes! You're so considerate to notice them. He might notice your other clothes if you wore any. <laughs> I know you desire me. That's true. I desire you to shut up, ho. Don't worry, my sister. We'll find you. Then you'll understand. Or else. Oh. Hey, he's hurt. You didn't have to let him fall. <laughs> Oops. Lakeisha. Yes, Rambo, I'm here. Lakeisha. <laughs> yes, sugar. Lakeisha. Who's the hot green chick? Oh, teenagers. I've done my part of the deal. Now you, sir, must deliver. Yeah, yeah, hold your horses. I'll drop my weapons. Oh, uh, okay, yep. To the left. There. Um, huh, that one, yeah. Got it. Are you through yet? Whoa, hold up, one more. Oh, uh, oh tear gas? I thought it was kind of ironic, considering the hiding place. Ooh, I desire him. Girl, you just nasty. Sister Lisa, tie him to the post. With pleasure. Get her cell number. Oh, shut up. And to welcome you to the collective, an old friend of yours. No, you didn't. You can't. Yes, we can. Say hello to Sister Sam. Sam, Sam, it's you. Help us. Come over here. Quick, over here. Oh, hold up. You're the wrong color of the rainbow now. She gone green. Hello, redneck. Who dog? Little long in the tooth, too. Literally. Brother Barry took away my ignorance. I no longer hug guns. I hug necks. To fight us is to die. 
To join us is to share love, isn't it, Sister Sam? I'd love to sink my teeth into her. Back off, girl, or I'll break you. Not her, Sister Sam, him, the redneck. Brother Barry, I shouldn't. There's something... Are you defying me? I should remember. Yeah, come on, Sammy. You know you've been wanting a little taste of Bobby Lee since you first saw my monster truck. Fight him, Sister Sam. End his ignorance. Something about him. Come on, sugar lump, dig in. Look at my spine. Mm-mm, that's good eating. I got me some tasty brain juice. Yes, sir. I order you to bite him for the collective. collective. All right, for the collective. Whoa, ho, oh, hey, hold on, that tickles. Dang, Sam, you got soft lips. That's actually kind of nice. Ow! Mama mia! Teeth, teeth, teeth! Ow! What are you, a Hoover? Ah! So tasty, so strong, it's like lightning in my veins. Yes, drink his willpower, drink his soul. (laughs) What did he ever do to you? He told us no, so we voted to take what's his, and now he'll vote our way too. Let me finish him, Brother Barry. No, Sister Lisa, quickly, let him loose. What? Don't I get my turn? Yes, but not on him. Let the redneck go with the sun loners, the light nuts. He's infected with the truth now. Let him infect the rest of them, unless they want to kill him first. We won't, because we have compassion. Aren't we the best ever? But Brother Barry, I'm so hungry. Sister Sam, will you bend your neck to Sister Lisa? Ooh, yeah! Sister Lisa, drink. Then bend your neck and share with the others. Oh, I desire all of you. Let's do this! Come on, Bobby. We gotta go. I feel so weak. Yeah, the great naked green bean did her magic. Worst hickey ever. Bobby, you gotta get up. I can't carry you and Rambo. That's okay, Lakeisha. I think I can walk now. Rambo? And what I said earlier? Forget it. That green chick gets around. Well, look who's feeling better. Let's get out of here. I'll take this arm. Room spinning. Lenny, I, I drunk too much. Where's the toilet? You throw up on me and you can crawl out on your own. Hi, Mom. You look different. Did you do your hair? He's delirious. Come on, Bobby, let's go. Get them scrawny legs walking. Move it, move it, move it. Yes, my people, feed off the others. Feed! Then go out into Kansas City and spread the taste of the collective. Bend your neck for everyone. And this world will be ours! <laughs> uh, that evil laugh is the bomb. I desire you, Brother Barry. Oh, shall we neck, Sister Lisa? <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> It's okay, Bobby Lee. We're back. It's okay. How long has he been out? Almost 16 hours. Is he going to be okay? Eat your soup. Are we going to be okay? Rambo, I... Tell me the truth. I'm old enough. You saw them. How many there were. Yeah. And you saw how willing they were to destroy anyone who didn't want to join them. It's like a disease where you want to die while you live. Close. It's wanting someone else to die so you can live. It's not a matter of if, but when. So, hush up and eat up while you can. I'm not hungry anymore. Well, maybe he'll miss the end. I thought he got the antidote in him. I guess not. He ain't green yet. He said something. Look Look what, baby? Look where? Look in my nose. It's green in there. Was that a joke? I think I liked him better next to Dad. (laughs) Did the virus almost get you, Bobby Lee? Nah, it was that green girl sucking the life out of me. (laughs) Oh, you ain't right. That's it. My mama didn't raise me to let no green girl play suck neck with my man. Lakeisha, sit back down. Just just wait a bit. What what time is it? It's sunset. Already? You was out of it. I was kind of hoping you stay that way. Because how I figured it, tonight's it. There won't be another tomorrow for us. Yeah, Lakeisha and I made a deal. When they come, we fight with everything but this pistol. It's got three bullets. It gets used last, if you know what I mean. Oh, darling. I can do it. We'll live free or die. That's it. I agree. I agree, too. Here they come. 
I'll get the guns. Wait. What? Just wait a minute. It should be kicking in. He's still delirious. Get the guns. Trust me. Please, if you shoot, they'll attack immediately. But, but if they ain't sure yet... Miss me much? Ah! She's here! She's gonna suck my spine! In your dreams, Creepo. You're back, ain't you, sunshine? What? Thanks to you, redneck. But you're green! I had to smear myself with algae and mud to look like them so I could escape. Gross! It's like a facial from hell, but it worked. Hang on, girl. You hurt my Bobby Lee. Yeah, about that, no hard feelings, okay? I was hoping you'd do it. By the way... What do you use on them lips? They're softer than a bunny's bottom. One-time thing, redneck. Won't happen again. Hello, crowd outside. We're all going to die. Worried much, anyone? Nope. Just wait for it. We've come for your soul. Why are we camping them right now? Wait for it. We'll drink the black girl first, and when she's green, we'll drink the boy. <laughs> and then we'll find all the others and... Oh, I get a headache. Wait for it. The collective has come to reap. Oh, oh, ouch, my head. It hurts. What's happening? I think I'm going to. Showtime. I can see him out the window. Oh, yeah. Butter pink, butter boom. Let me see, too. Gross. That's wicked. What's happening? Their heads oh, are... Oh, my brain. I think it's going to... Exploding. Some didn't, though. I get it. The ones like me. Would somebody say something that makes sense? My brother's antidote wasn't just a cure. It was a retrovirus. The reverse transcriptase created a new DNA that the retrovirus injected into cells, which created new cells designed not just to resist the parasitic virus, but destroy it. Dude, I barely passed study hall. You want to translate? Sorry, it's stuff I read in my brother's books. Basically, when that hot green honey... Watch it. When that ugly swamp girl drank from my spine, instead of infecting me, she got herself infected. Plus, Nature Girl got a high from my energy and didn't notice the retrovirus going to work. When Barry said to redistribute the health, she did just that and infected the rest. They left and infected the others. So it was just a matter of time to see if my genomes whooped their genomes' butts. Why did some survive? The retrovirus didn't kill folks who had enough of a special kind of genetic code. What code is that? The kind that instinctively loves personal freedom. Help me get up. Oh, no. You've been sick and you gotta heal. I got plans for you, Mr. Man. Dang it, woman, let me up. There's people out there hurting and confused and we gotta help them. Let them know they're okay. They ain't alone. Another collective, Bobby? No way. Once they're on their feet, they can leave if they want. See, folks like us hold some truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. They got certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I can't promise you'll be happy, but I won't hold you down neither. Wasn't that a speech in a Dirty Harry movie or something? Boy, you got a lot of learning to do. But first thing first, we gotta clean up this mess. It sure is dark out there. Let's bring on the light! Thank you for listening to The Last Dude on Earth, part of Intercom Kansas City's Night of the Literary Dead. The original adaptation written by Mark Groves and produced by Intercom Kansas City. May your Halloween go well, and may the thoughts of true liberty and freedom not make your head explode. <laughs>